Welcome to the Auditor General of South Africa. When it comes to public finance management, there are some terms that are often misunderstood. We'd like to offer some clarity on irregular expenditure and material irregularity. On the face of it, they sound the same, but there are some substantial differences, and they originate from two different pieces of legislation. Let's start with irregular expenditure. This simply refers to instances where the requirements of legislation were not followed in the process leading up to any payment. The Public Finance Management Act or PFMA and the Municipal Finance Management Act or MFMA regulate all national, provincial and municipal government expenditure respectively and clearly state the procurement and payment process to be complied with. Let's illustrate. A contractor has been awarded a contract to build a school. The procurement process for awarding the construction contract did not comply with legislation and regulations on supply chain management. So, all payments to the contractor will be considered irregular expenditure. Once irregular expenditure has been identified, the accounting officer or authority must investigate to determine the root cause and impact by considering the following. First, did the non-compliance result in a loss? Then, was any fraud, corrupt and criminal activity involved? And should an employee or employees be held accountable? If there was no loss or fraud, corrupt and criminal activity, the irregular expenditure may be condoned by the relevant authority. The necessary disciplinary action should be taken against the employee or employees responsible. This should act as a deterrent for any further irregular expenditure. Now let's explore material irregularity. Like irregular expenditure, material irregularity also starts with the non-compliance or contravention of legislation, but extends further. It can be applied to suspected fraud and suspected theft, as well as breach of fiduciary duty. Let's expand on the main features of material irregularity. For any non-compliance to be considered a material irregularity, it must have resulted in, or is likely to result in, a material impact. This must have been identified during an audit. What is impact? This is a financial loss, the misuse or loss of a material public resource, or substantial harm to a public sector institution or the general public. Here's another way of looking at irregular expenditure and material irregularity. They differ in terms of value. Irregular expenditure is the total expenditure to date. Material irregularity, on the other hand, may not always have a value, as there are other non-financial material impacts. For instance, substantial harm to the general public cannot always be quantified. But, if the material irregularity relates to financial loss, then this has an actual or likely value. An award of 20 million rand was made to a supplier that did not have the required CIDB grading for the construction of a building. Extensive remedial work to the value of 10 million rand was subsequently carried out and paid by the auditee to rectify defects through different suppliers in addition to the 20 million rand. All payments to the supplier that did not have the required CIDB grading would be irregular expenditure amounting to 20 million rand, whereas the financial loss would be 10 million rand. Let's be clear, just because a transaction is classified as irregular expenditure does not make it material irregularity. Here are some quick examples of material irregularity. If a competitive bidding process is not followed as required by legislation and results in an auditee paying excessive amounts for goods or services, this is material irregularity. When an invoice is not paid within 30 days, resulting in material interest being charged and paid to a supplier, this is material irregularity. An ineffective system of expenditure control resulting in payment for goods or services that have not been received. That's the essence of irregular expenditure and material irregularity. If you need any further information on these concepts or any other public finance matters, please visit www.agsa.co.za